Hello everyone, this is Mohammed, and this video is an update for my LCD 16 by 2 tutorial that I've created a year ago. So I've written a new version of the driver that I want to share with you today. I'm going to show you how to use this LCD display with the Steam board. So here is the updated driver. You can see all of this bunch of functions that you can use. Uh, you can print a normal text, you can uh, use two line or one line mode, uh, blink the cursor, shift right, shift left, and these two are new functions that are added to this version. So you can print an integer number and you can print a floating point with a number of decimal points. All right, let's get started. I first would like to walk you briefly through the pinout of this LCD. So VSS is ground, VDD is 5 volt, V output is connected to a potentiometer to control the contrast of the LCD. This is extremely important. RS is connected to a digital output in the microcontroller. RW to ground because this is read write pin and we only want to perform write operations. So you connect this to ground. Uh, E-Bin is connected to a digital output in the microcontroller and D0 to D7 are the data lines. In 8 bits mode you connect the 8 of them and in 4 bits mode you only connect the last 4 ones D4 to D7. A, K are anode and cathode for the backlight so you connect A to 3 or 5 volt and K to ground. Now let's open QMX to set up a new project and to configure those pins on the STM board side. On QMX first click on new project and select the right board, Steam 3407 in my case, VGT, uh, and on the pinout, I'm first going to enable two outputs for RS and enable pins that we mentioned in here. So for RS, register select and enable bit. So I'm going to connect them to PE0 and PE1. So I need to set this as digital output. And I'm going to rename it, I'm going to call it call PE0 RS and PE1 enable. And now we need to enable pins for our data lines. So D0 to D7 as shown in here. And these are digital outputs again. Uh, and the library is designed so that D0 to D3 has to be connected to the same port on the STM. And same thing for D4 to D7. They have to be connected to uh, their own same uh, port. So I'm going to connect uh, D0 to D3 on port B from 12 to 15. And D4 to D7 on port D8 uh, to 11. So let me enable those and set them to digital output. So these are for D0 to D3. I'm going to uh, name them as well. And now for D4 to D7, I'm going to enable them on port D, PD8 to PD11. And I'll enable them D4 to D7 as well. So that's all we need to do on the pinouts. Enable pins for enable an RS and for the data lines. Uh, in 8 bits mode, you will need the 8 of them. And in 4 bits mode, you will only need to enable 4 to 7. But we'll enable all of them anyway because we're going to test uh, both of the modes. Uh, now let's go to clock configuration and I want to change the speed to uh, 168. So I just want to test the library with the maximum speed just to see if it's going to experience any issues or not. Okay, now the clock speed is set to maximum. Uh, now let's go to configuration and just to double check that the pins are set up correctly. That's correct. All of them are output push pull. The speed is low. It's good to have the speed low to, to make the bar consumption minimum. Now we're ready to generate the source code. So click on this icon uh, and they give the project a name. I'm going to call it LCD1602 video. And you need to select the right IDE uh, MDK ARM V5 for color microvision. Uh, that's all. So I'll click OK. And now once the source code is generated, click on open project and this will take you to Carl Microvision IDE. And in Carl Microvision, the first thing we need to do is we need to add the uh, LCD library to the project. So we see we have a main, an empty main created by Cubemix uh, and we need to add the library files to our project. And you'll see the library files attached on the description of the video. Uh, I have them, so I need to copy them to my project file. So here's my project folder. I'm going to copy them in here. And you need on Cal Macrovision, you need to go to Application User, right click, um, add existing files to the group, uh, go one step back, and you need to include the C file and the H file. And one thing you need to do is you need to include the path for this folder to the project. So, options for target go to C, uh, include paths, a new path, and you need to select the location of that. And I store them in the LCD1602 video folder, the main folder. So you need to include this path. And that's it. 
Now you can open the library files. Um, first thing you need to do is you need to include the header file in your main. So go to the C file and copy the header file of the library and paste it in the main. Uh, I just want to clarify one thing here. Uh, you remember when, I, when we included the path, this was mainly because of this. If I would delete that path, this one will be unidentified. So let me just experiment. Uh, so when I delete this path, this one will show an error, as you can see in here. This one is not found. So that's why you need to have the path back. I'm going to do that really quick. OK, now the problem is solved. And now we're ready to use the LCD display. Uh, so I've connected my LCD display to the Steam board. Uh, so do connect yours before we carry on. Now, the first function we need to call is LCD begin to start the an 8 bits mode of operation or a 4 bits. I'm going to start with 8 bits mode of operation. And you need to put this in begin number 2. It first expects the uh, RS and enable port, which is port E, according to Cubamex. Uh, and then the pins for RS and enable, and then the port for 0 to 4, uh, this one needs to be 0 to 3 rather, uh, and then the pins 0 to 3, and the port for 4 to 7, and then those pins. So let's do that together. So TPIO port E was for RS and enable, or because we labeled them, uh, Cubamix would have generated a defined file, so RS TPIO port and then RS pin, enable pin, uh, then D0 port, uh, D0 pin, and so on. So we've bought the port for D0 to D3, and we bought the pin, D0 pin, D1 pin, D2 pin, and D3 pin. Next one is the port for uh, 4 to 7. So I can put D4. When you click control space, it will suggest to you a parameter to put. So it's D4 port, and then the pins, D4 to D7. So D4 pin, D5 pin, uh, D6, and D7. And that's it. Th these are all the parameters for this function. Uh, and just a quick comment. If you're wondering how come uh, Karl Makovigen knows those names already, uh, this is because we labeled them in Cubamix, and Cubamix created a max constants uh, defined file. So when you right click on this, go to definition, that's after we compile it. So let's compile the code. Okay, compiled fine without any errors. Now when you right click on this and go to definition, this will take you to max constant .h file, just like in here. And you'll see all the labels we bought in Cubamix being converted into uh, D0 bin is given to DBI open 12. D1 bin is DBI open 13, just like what we did in Cubamix. But Cubamix, uh, written this nicely to us. Okay, now we're ready to print something to the LCD, so let's try to print uh, Hello World for instance. Uh, so I'll compile the code and load it to the board, and let's have a look at the LCD. Okay, good, we can see Hello World on the screen. Now let's try to print to the second line. You can use a function called uh, second line to jump in to the next line. And uh, I'm gonna print something else, something like this my village. So let's compile the code again, load it to the board, and let's have a look at the LCD. Okay, brilliant. This is working as well. Uh, now let me try to print in numbers to the LCD using the new function. So print integer and print float. Uh, so I'm going to clear the LCD first. I'm going to put a delay between the first functions because I'm going to leave them in there and the next one. So I'm going to put two seconds. Oh, just one second. And then I'm going to print the number. So print integer, I'm going to print 1, 2, 3, for instance, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, another delay. And then I'm going to print in the second line the floating number. So I'm going to print uh, 14.5678. And I'm going to put three decimal places only. So let's compile the code loaded to the board and have a look at the LCD again. Okay, very good. This is working as well. Uh, and you see in the header file, in the library header file, there are many functions to experiment with. You can uh, set the cursor into a random position, uh, enable one line, one line mode, uh, remove the cursor, bring it back, uh, blink the cursor and stop blinking, 
remove the display temporarily and bring it back with the same content, shift to the right, shift to the left. But I'll leave that for you to experiment with. Uh, I'm now going to test the 4 bits mode of operation, as I said. So 4 bits, you only use the uh, D4 to D7. So I, need, can, I can delete D3 to D0 uh, with their port name. I can delete those. Uh, and this would only need D4 to D7. Now let's, I'm going to put these in a loop as well, so that I can test two things at the same time, the 4-bit mode and running the code inside a loop, because some people had an issue with this in my earlier version. So, uh, and you would need to put a delay at the end, uh, and clear the display before you get into the first position again. Okay, so let me compile the code, load it to the board, and we'll test that. And as I said, for 4-bits mode, you don't need D0 to D3, so you can disconnect D0 to D3 and just connect 4 to 7 as I'm going to show you in a bit in the video. Ok, brilliant. 4 bit mode works fine and the code inside the loop is functional. And this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. Thank you for watching and as always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you next time.